Greetings, Earthlings. I'm back with another interface review for you guys. So today we're looking at this guy, the Audient ID4 High Performance USB Audio Interface. If you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around 200 bucks on Amazon. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the Rode NT1 connected directly to the ID4 with 48 volts phantom power on and my gain at around 55%. I won't do any post processing or EQ, but I will boost it in post, so check the doobly doo to see what I did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You're obviously going to get the interface. You get the required USB cable, you get a quick start guide, and you actually get some free plugins and downloads. When we get to the build quality of this thing, I just gotta say it's probably one of the best feeling interfaces that I've come across so far. It has an all aluminum chassis, the dials feel incredible, there's almost no wobble or anything. The big ID button does have a little bit of wobble, but it's nothing that I'd be concerned with. On the bottom of the interface, there are four rubber feet to keep it from sliding around your desk, and it also has a decent amount of weight to it. On the front of the interface, you're gonna find a quarter inch DI input, and you will also find a set of quarter inch and 3.5 millimeter headphone ports, which do offer latency-free monitoring. On the back, you'll find a few more pieces of I.O. You're gonna find the USB 2.0 port to connect it to your computer. You'll find a set of quarter inch outputs to run to your powered monitors. You'll find the plus 48 volts phantom power switch, and you'll find an XLR combo jack to connect a line level or mic level input. On the top of the device, the first thing you'll find is the microphone gain control, which will obviously control the microphone or line level input on the back. Then you'll find the DI gain dial, which will obviously control the DI input level. Then you'll find the monitor mix dial, which controls the mix between your zero latency monitoring and your computer's playback audio. All the way to the right will be 100% playback audio, and all the way to the left will be 100% zero latency monitoring. Then you have a button to mute your speaker output. Then you have an ID button. And when you press that down, it allows you to use this volume dial to scroll through or adjust any input settings for your plugins or your DAW. And then speaking of this big dial, this is just going to control your headphone output as well as your speaker output on the back. And if you are to press this button once, it will actually activate a negative 15 decibel dim for the speaker output in case you want to decrease the volume very suddenly. Then at the top, you do have a couple of indicator lights, the first one being a plus 48 volts indicator light, the second being a status light to indicate if you are getting a decent connection with your computer, and then you have a set of meters ranging from negative 36 dB to zero dB. The top meter will be for your microphone or line level input, and the bottom meter will be for your DI input. As far as specs, this thing has a bit depth of 24 bit, a sampling rate of up to 96 kilohertz, plus 48 volts of phantom power when this thing is running on bus power, and it has a gain range of 0 to 58 decibels of gain on the microphone input. And if you're interested in any other specs, here is a bunch of the other information that you can pause to take a look at. Now in order to test the noise floor of the ID4, I'm actually using a new method which I picked up on YouTube from a channel named Julian Krauss 2 and I'll go ahead and link that in the upper right hand corner so you can check that out. Now in order to test how much gain this interface actually has, I've connected the infamously gain hungry SM7B directly to the ID4. I increased the gain to 9 on the interface and this is the level that I'm getting. When we look at the latency of the ID4 with a buffer size of 128 samples, we have a resulting round trip latency of 11.2 milliseconds. When we increase this to 256, we have 17 milliseconds. And when we decrease it to 64, we're at 8.3 milliseconds. So now I have my Gibson Les Paul Studio, which has passive pickups connected directly to the ID4 with my gain at about three. And I'm using the DI input I'm gonna go ahead and play the guitar raw so you can hear what kind of DI sound you're getting, and then I'll switch to an amp simulator and show you how it sounds with that. Mm -hmm. 
So let me just go ahead and put it this way. If I didn't use the Arteria audio fuse and I didn't have a need for up to three inputs on my interface, this would likely be my new daily driver. In terms of pros, this thing has an insanely good build quality. The form factor is tiny, so it takes up almost no desk space. It had good performance in terms of the noise floor. It has 58 dBs of gain. It has probably my favorite sounding DI of any interface that I've tested so far. It also has good A to D converters. It did a decent job with latency. It has freaking meters on this thing, which is extremely rare for interfaces and I absolutely love. You also have zero latency slash computer playback mixing capabilities. You have pan control so you can monitor your zero latency stuff as mono or you can make it so you hear the mic and line in your left headphone and the DI in your right headphone. And it also offers 48 volts of phantom power. And then in terms of cons, for a single mic pre interface, I just think $200 is a little bit on the expensive side in today's market. So would I recommend this thing? Absolutely. The pros of this thing are absolutely insane, and I had to struggle to come up with a con, so I just picked on the price, even though I think this is absolutely worth the $200 price tag. So if you are somebody who just needs a single microphone or line input as well as a DI input and $200 is in your budget, 100% I recommend this thing, pick it up. But if you think you'll need more than the one microphone pre down the road, I would suggest checking out audience bigger interfaces. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. If you want to influence what I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcast and cast a vote. If you want more videos like this, logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server, link in the description. And I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.